up next on Hoops Arkansas Football. Highlights from the fourth week of the high school season, including Camden Fairview at Benton, a 4A West showdown between Siloam Springs and Marlton, and a AAA throwdown between Warren and Dollarway. Plus, we'll introduce you to a fighting Billy cheerleader, our spirit student of the week, and give you updated rankings for every classification. Hard-hitting highlights, Friday night fun, Hooten's Arkansas football is next. <laughs> Now, Arkansas's most watched sports show, Hooten's Arkansas Football. Hello and welcome to Hooten's Arkansas Football, the fourth week of the high school football season. Everybody's in conference play, and we have all the highlights from Friday night coming up in the next 30 minutes right here on Hooten's Arkansas Football. We're glad you're uh, here. We're glad you've tuned in. And we're going to begin with the number one team in the state and arguably one of the best teams in America, the Springdale Bulldogs, playing host to Fort Smith Southside. We'll begin in Class 5A, and our 5A highlights are brought to you by First Security Bank. Springdale back at home for the second straight week, and what a leg. Look at Southside's kicker, Ian Chain. He hits a 44-yard field goal, just gets over the crossbar, and Southside actually led this thing 3 to nothing. But the Bulldogs would answer. Matt Kling scales, juking and jiving for Springdale. It pays off with a 25-yard carry down to the 11. That would set up future Razorback Mitchell Mustang to future Florida Gator Ben Cleveland. Springdale's up 7-3. to A little bit later, Mustang finds Andrew Norman, this time a 51-yard pass play. The Red Dogs are rolling. Two plays later, Kling scales again. He takes it in from five yards out. Springdale 14, Southside 3. In the second quarter, Mustang finds Damian Williams, another future Florida Gator. He jukes down the sidelines, finally knocked out of bounds. And four plays later, Mustang will go back to Cleveland. Five-yard touchdown pass. Springdale was at 21-3. They apply the mercy rule again. Final score, Bulldogs 41, Southside 3. Good crowd on hand in Russellville for the Cyclones 5A West opener and homecoming game against the Fayetteville Purple Dogs. Fayetteville ran right at Russellville, and the Cyclones had trouble tackling the Purple Dogs. Junior quarterback Dallas McCutcheon picked his way through Russellville's defense on this run in the second quarter. He had scored on a bootleg keeper earlier. McCutcheon will then roll to his left and passes to senior Kyle Ackerson. And Fayetteville is looking to extend its lead to two touchdowns just before halftime. But on the next play, McCutcheon, who had almost 150 yards offense in the night, keeps again, but he loses it, and Russellville will recover. Russellville's offense really struggled at times, though. Four turnovers for Russellville Friday night, and quarterback Eli Craner took a beating from Fayetteville's D. Final score, Fayetteville 33, Russellville 13. 5A South, guys. This is the first conference game. The winner of this thing has a driver's seat. The winner of it has a driver's seat. We're as good as anybody in this conference. All we've got to do is go out there and play football. Camden Fairview opening conference play at a packed house in Benton. A 5A South showdown and Camden looks sharp early. Senior quarterback David Nix zipping one to classmate Justin Darden. The Cardinals are on the move. A little later, Nix finds a sophomore DeAnthony Curtis on the wide receiver screen and he cuts it upfield. Nice game for Camden Fairview, but mistakes and turnovers plague the Cardinals all year and all night at Benton. On the 10th play of the drive, Benton's Drew Fugit comes up with the pick and Benton's headed the other way. Senior quarterback Josh Langley passed for 146 yards and a couple of touchdowns Friday night. He hits classmate Chris Vaughn right here. It appeared that the Cardinals had dodged a bullet when Darden came up with the sweet pick at the Fairview one yard line, but pass interference gave the ball back to Benton and two plays later, Langley pulled in to give the Panthers the lead. Benton built a 21 point halftime lead and withstood a third quarter flurry by Fairview. Final score, Benton 35. Camden Fairview, 14. Up the road just a little bit at Bryant, it's 5A Central action. Little Rock Catholic still sky high following last week's win over Northside, and the Rockets showing no signs of a letdown. Quarterback Kyle Short to Steven Sanders, and gets him to the goal line. The Rockets would eventually score the touchdown. Then it's Bryant's turn. Senior quarterback Anthony Mask having a scramble, makes a play. He finds Jake Jackson for the touchdown. That tied it at seven, but Catholic's defense didn't allow another point, and the Rockets cruised to their third win of the year. Year. Final score, Little Rock Catholic, 25, Bryant, 7. 
Now up to Conway, the Wampus Castle gets for their first win over Central in three years. And the Tigers trying to give Conway some help. Alex Blake's pass picked off by Conway's Jeremy Henderson, but the Wampus Cat offense couldn't do anything with it. Later, another Blake pass, another interception. This one by John Jolly in the end zone, but it wouldn't matter. Conway simply couldn't take advantage of all of Central's mistakes, and Central kicked a field goal in the final seconds to win it. Final score, Little Rock Central 10, Conway 7. There are no changes in Hooton's Arkansas Football Class 5A Top 10. Springdale fell behind but came back and smoked Southside. Next week it's the Battle of the Bulldogs, Springdale and Fayetteville. Fort Smith Northside sticks at number 4 and Benton is likely headed for a 10-0 season at number 5. Hooton's Arkansas Football caught a little flack for having Little Rock Catholic in our preseason Top 10, but the Rockets have lived up to their billing. Rogers starts the second 10. The Mounties still have a chance to make the playoffs. Bentonville is a long shot. Little Rock Central's up to 13, just ahead of Conway and Fairview. Lake Hamilton's number 16. Hooton's Arkansas football correctly predicted Forest City to knock off Jonesboro Friday night at Forest City. Hurricane 17, there's Van Buren and Forest City. Cabot won its first game of the year, beating winless Searcy Friday night. Hooton's Arkansas football also predicted Mountain Homes victory over Jacksonville. And the Bombers move up to number 21. Then it's Pine Bluff, Sylvan Hill, Watson Chapel looking like a playoff contender, and Jacksonville drop to number 25. Coming up next, more of Hooton's Arkansas Football Class 4A highlights are coming up next. The S is for Siloam Springs, and Friday night the undefeated Panthers were in a hole at Moralton, trailing by three touchdowns in the fourth quarter, but Super Siloam would rally. Senior quarterback Chase Pittman keeping it for a touchdown that cut Moralton's lead to 28-14 midway through the final quarter. Moralton quarterback Kyle Russell is a good one, but his pass goes off the receiver's hand, and Siloam's Trent Butter on the tip drill intercepts, and the Panthers are back in business. Pittman is a veteran quarterback, the kind that comes in handy during a fourth quarter rally. And speaking of hands, great concentration by Stephen Barnett on the sideline. And Siloam has Marlton backing up. Pittman to the other side now. The screen to Barnett. He's got blockers. He's got daylight. He's got a 22-yard Siloam touchdown. And the Panthers are within seven now. Siloam's cheerleaders a little bit excited. And this was a thriller. Siloam stopped Marlton, got the ball back, drove about 50 yards, and with seven seconds left, Pittman heaves it to the goal line. But Marlton's Freddie Burton has the end interception and Marlton hangs on. Final score, Devil Dogs 28, Siloam Springs 21. As we knew they only had, we was only seven seconds left on the clock, so we knew they had to take a shot deep after they didn't get the, the pass before completed, so we were just trying to stay patient and keep everything in front of us out of the end zone. Good win, yes. okay? Hey, win us some closures, okay? Win us some closures. It's not a good team. That's not a good thing winning close games, okay? We're not giving away anymore. Let's get better. Let's get better Sunday. Here we go. One, two, three. Be Out of J.A. Fair, the War Eagles playing its first class 4A opponent of the season, entertaining Hot Springs Lakeside. And at halftime, Lakeside was on top 33 to 28. But here comes Fair. That's Brandon Moore. Finding Justin Cross early in the third quarter. Fair goes up 34-33. But the War Eagles would miss the two-point conversion try, and that would prove costly as Lakeside adds a late touchdown and an extra point to upend the War Eagles for the third time in four years. Final score and a wild one. Lakeside 41. Fair 40. From Fair across town to Mills, where the Comets are the surprise team in the 4A Southeast, Mills was 3-0 against 5A teams in the non-conference schedule and headed for a showdown with defending league champ Monticello. But here come the fighting Billies. Milton Rimley rushed for 213 yards and two scores. Should have been three as he trips himself up at the goal line here. Not to worry, though. Two plays later, Monticello's junior Michael Green punches it in and tied it up 14-14 late in the first half. Mills would respond, though. Leonard King taking over. He's going to find the corner and get a big chunk of his 237 yards on the night. On the next play, King shows he can also take it between the tackles. This is just one of his four touchdowns on the night, and that put Mills up 20-14. to 14. This game was back and forth all night. Here's what champions are made of. Rimley again with a nice game as Monticello mounts a 10-play drive to end the half. Senior quarterback Matt Whiting will cap it off with a short touchdown pass to his big tight end. That's Rudy Harrell. Monticello regains the lead and would hold on in the second half in a wild one. Final score, Monticello 33, Mills 32. 
Hooters Arkansas football predicted the Greenwood Bulldogs would beat Valonia by 14 points on Friday. Final score, Greenwood 42, Valonia 28. And the Bulldogs hold on the top spot. They're followed by Wynn. The Yellow Jackets stay at number two, even though they have not been impressive the past two weeks. Alma's number three in baseball's four. The Pioneers are averaging almost 47 points a game, but get this, Batesville's four wins are against teams with a combined record of four and 12. Stuttgart's defense is awfully good. They've given up just seven points the past three games. Pulaski Robinson took command of the 4A Southwest by blasting Magnolia 21 to seven on Friday night down in Columbia County. There's Morlton at seven, Savon eight, and Marion at number nine. The Patriots are four and oh, but they needed a last second field goal to beat Green County Tech on Friday. Hope starts the second 10, followed by Valonia. The Eagles are two and two and face a critical conference game against Morlton next. Then it's Blytheville, Lakeside, Monticello, and Mills. Fair is number 17. The War Eagles like to keep them close. Their four games this year have been decided by a total of 15 points. BB completely dominated Paragould and improved to 3-1 and one on the year. Then it's Harrison, Oak Grove, and West Helena. The Cougars could make the playoffs this year after beating Whitehall by a point on Friday. Cross it and Whitehall will meet next week down in Ashley County. That's probably a playoff elimination matchup. Then it's Greenbrier and Green County Tech to round out Hooton's top 25. Now the ConocoPhillips Spirit Student of the Week. What makes Monticello's senior classroom stand out and cheer captain Christy Witcher such a special part of the Monticello High student body? She brings discipline and a commitment to purpose learned through long hours on the family farm. Well, growing up on a farm, I think, has taught me to be more responsible because you have animals that depend on you. And if you don't come home after a ball game one night, you know, they're not going to get fed. So it really teaches you that you have to do stuff and you can't just go off and party and you have to be dependable. And Christy's passion for people and animals will serve her well as a postgraduate. I think I want to go into science or biology or something to do with animals. I think I'll be happy with. Nominations for the ConocoPhillips Spirit Student of the Week are welcomed and can be made by logging on to Hootens.com or by stopping in ConocoPhillips Stations of Arkansas. And congratulations again to Christy, our Conoco and Phillips 66 Spirit Student of the Week. Be sure to get your nomination forms in. We're getting them off the internet and folks going by stations, uh, filling out their forms and sending them in. Get those in because at the end of the year, we'll be naming a Spirit Student of the Year and the winner gets a $2,000 college scholarship. Coming up next, it's more of Hooton's Arkansas football. We have highlights from Class 3A straight ahead. <laughs> More of Hooton's Arkansas football, brought to you by Big Red Fina. I want to see us playing, playing like we're a top 10 team. You said all year long we were a top 10 team, but we're back in there, guys. Now we got to prove that we still need to stay there. Atkins fresh off their big win over Shiloh Christian and a heavy favorite at Pottsville Friday night. Chop, chop, the Pottsville Apaches go to work. As Atkins crowds the line of scrimmage on third down, Pottsville pops one over the top. Sophomore Jacob Irwin's got the first down and more. Pottsville would drive to the one-yard line on the opening series of the game, but on fourth and goal, Chris Holbrook's pass to the end zone falls incomplete. Good coverage by Atkins' Logan Duval there. And two plays later, the Red Devils welcome back. Sonic super teamer Jonathan Cathy. He rushed for more than 1,000 yards last year, but he's been injured. Only played a few snaps last week. 99 yards right here for Atkins. Uh-oh, hold on. Laundry on the field. They bring it back, blocking in the back. You know, Bro and Roy, the Red Devil broadcast team, didn't like that call, but it wouldn't matter. Kathy would score two touchdowns later in the game and finally pull away from Coach Phil Collins' pesky Pottsville team. Final score, Atkins 34, Pottsville Apaches 12. The Foxhide Miners lost to CAC by 35 points last year, but it was 17 to 12 at halftime on Friday when our TV cameras arrived. CAC on the move. Sophomore Drew Stringfella, the big fullback DJ Williams for a first down, but the drive would stall and a 35 yard field goal is blocked. Aaron Mathis and the Miners trying to dig in on the upset at Mustang Mountain, but a little bit later, Ryan Barnes will pull down one of Four CAC interceptions on the night, and the Mustangs would cruise in the second half. Final score, CAC 45, Boxite 12. Pulaski Academy got pounded at Warren last week. Friday night, they headed to Faulkner County, taking on Mayflower, and the Bruins came out ready. They were up by two touchdowns in the second half when Stephen Lux hits Brent Hakes. That's a 40-yard score, and it's 
33 to 13 in the third quarter. A little bit later, it's Lux again to Cruz Williams. Hey, the sophomore six foot four, and Williams and the Bruins are going to be tough to take down in the six triple A final score. Pulaski Academy 47, Mayflower 23. Little Rock Christian playing host to Ball Knob, and Christian looking for its second straight win. First position, that's Matt Mazzoni to Robert Well for Christian. He gets inside the two, but it would take four plays before they would hand it to the little man. Five foot eight in sophomore Tyler Weddle on the touchdown, and the Warrior route was on. Final score, Little Rock Christian 41, Ball Knob 0. To the four AAA we go, undefeated Paris on Elkins Friday night. And when senior quarterback Andrew Townsend wasn't running for Paris, he was passing the junior Marcus Brown for a touchdown. And Paris looks like a playoff team for the first time this decade. Final score from Elkins, Paris 28, the Elks 7. Big crowd on hand at Warren for the Lumberjacks and Dollarway. Hooton's Arkansas football class 3A game of the week. Warren was up a touchdown in the third quarter when quarterback Jonathan Cooper hits A.J. Avery with one of his five catches. A couple of plays later, Warren's Deontay Jackson scores from a couple of yards out. That put Warren ahead 21 to 8 and in complete control the rest of the way. The Lumberjacks were not through though. A little later, Cooper finds Avery another big game. Avery had 94 yards receiving on the night. Then it's Deontay Jackson again for Warren. Running with determination against a beefy dollar weight defense. Jackson's a senior. He led all rushers Friday night with 108 yards and two touchdowns. And three plays later, Cooper finds junior Moorhead Jordan in the end zone for another Lumberjack touchdown. This young Warren team has made a serious statement by dominating Pulaski Academy in Dollarway the past two weeks. Final score, Warren 28, Dollarway 16. Yeah, I told you this is our house. Ain't nobody coming down here and winning our house, right? We knew we were going to have to be physical against them. I mean, they're big and strong and fast, and they get, they get after it. And, you know, it's really not our style. But we wanted to come out here and make a statement at home. Now, they talked all week, and we brought it to them. And here are Hooton's Arkansas football updated Class 3A rankings. Booneville stays on top. They're 4-0, and Booneville's first-team defense still hasn't given up a point. Warren also undefeated, ranked number two with some impressive wins. They've already beaten two of the best teams in Class 3A and knocked off Stuttgart in the season opener. OCO is number three after beating Harrisburg by 37 on Friday. Look for the Seminoles now to cruise to the 3 AAA title. Dollarway drops to four and Pulaski Academy's five. Then it's Ashdown, CAC, Nashville, Atkins and Shallow. The Saints scored 56 on P Ridge, and they've got a big one next week at Prairie Grove. The Tigers are number 11, and they've been waiting for this Shiloh game since last winter. Pocahontas is number 12, then it's Hamburg, Harrisburg, and Green Forest. The Tigers are undefeated, but they haven't played a team with a winning record yet. Lone Oak is number 16. The Jackrabbits have won their last two with great effort from senior running back Walter Ellis. Newport is 17, then it's Boxside and Farmington. The Cardinals move up to number 19, and they might be the second best team in the four AAA. Mean is number 20, and McGee is 21. The Owls are 3-1 on the year and looking to make the playoffs for the first time since Lanny Dowks took them back in 2000. Clinton stayed undefeated on Friday when they beat Clarksville by one. Highlands 23, Paris 24, and there's the Panthers at number 25. Coming up next, more of Putin's Arkansas football class 2A highlights are next. Okay, guys. It's right here for the take. Oh, yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Let's go. We owe them about three years' work. Yes, yes, sir. sir. We owe them about three years' work. Coach Joe Beasley's Harmony Grove Hornets, a veteran team, traveling Friday night to Bearden. This is a key 7AA East opener. And on the Hornets' second possession, senior Omar Thrower runs wide for a few of his game high 119 yards for Harmony Grove. Four plays later, Thrower again hits the right side of his line. Six yard pickup there. And junior quarterback Marcus Stone completed two passes Friday night, including this one. The classmate Clarence Gill, who sprints 49 yards for the touchdown. Harmony Grove led Bearden 7-0. Thrower would run for two more touchdowns, and the Hornet defense held Bearden's passing game to 151 yards. Final score, Harmony Grove 31, Bearden 12.
from Bearded now up to Little Rock. Episcopal facing its toughest test of the season on Friday, entertaining the Perryville Mustangs. That's Perryville's Dustin McAnally. He's one of the state's top rushers. 46-yard touchdown, John Perryville up, eight to zip. But Episcopal not dogging it here. That's John Stevens with a short touchdown run. Two-point conversion failed. That made it eight to six. But that wouldn't matter as Episcopal stays undefeated with the best win in school history. Final score, Episcopal 27, Perryville 14. Number one ranked Ryzen extended its regular season win streak to 39 on Friday night, whipping strong 57 to eight. Junction City had the week off. Harding Academy beat Hughes, but the big news is they lost to Sonic Super Team receiver Kurt Adams for the season with a knee injury. Jesseville and Desart move up after easy victories. There's Harmony Grove at number six, followed by Hughes and Lavaca. The Golden Arrows knocked off Charleston for the first time in eight years and ended Charleston's 48-game conference winning streak. The Tigers and Greenland complete the top ten. The next five looks like this. Gurdon, Eudora, Smackover, Derricks, and undefeated Apex. Episcopal. Episcopal upset Perryville and puts itself in the driver's seat of the 4AA Conference. Number 16, Mark Tree, is 4-0 and plays host to Cross County next week in a key 3AA clash. Perryville drops 11 spots to 17, and Danville falls 7 spots after getting blown out by Jesseville. There are Earl and Magnet Cove, EPC, Cross County, Spring Hill, Mineral Springs, and Bearden round out the top 25. Now for our State Farm Play of the Week, we take you back to Springdale, where it's Fort Smith Southside kicker Ian Chain nailing a 44-yard field goal, and the Rebels actually led Springdale three to nothing. And that is good enough to be our State Farm Play of the Week. Remember, coming up at the end of the season, we'll name a State Farm Play of the Year and honor Arkansas's top coaches and players from every classification at the State Farm Awards. Screaming cheerleaders, marching bands, crazy mascots, and dancing drill teams, they've all helped make Friday nights at the stadium a favorite Arkansas pastime. And this fall, Conoco and Phillips 66 stations will not... Tonight, we look forward to seeing you again next week when we'll have highlights from the fifth week of the high school football season. Hard to believe it'll be half over by this time next week. And we look forward to seeing you then right here on Hooton's Arkansas Football. You've been watching Arkansas's most watched sports show, Putin's Arkansas Football.